What's up, Internet? Welcome to the next Modern Security Baby Step. Modern Security Baby Steps is all about simple measures that you can take in the Microsoft 365 ecosystem. Small work for big gains in cybersecurity. I put a poll on LinkedIn and said, what should the next Modern Security Baby Step be? And I give you a choice across uh, safe links and attachments, information protection, and DLP. And DLP won the show. And I think DLP won the show because it sparked some curiosity. There were some comments about, why is DLP a baby step? Well, in this video, I'm going to show you some base policies that I would encourage deployment across for every customer. It's all about reducing risk in electronic communications, helping cut out some liability, and just making it easier to do the right thing and harder to do the wrong thing. All right, so let's check out Data Loss Prevention and Microsoft 365 in this modern security baby step. All right, so here we are in the Microsoft Admin Center again, and today we're going to be working on 7 Plus 1 Labs uh, again. And today we're going to be living in the Compliance Center to make these DLP policies. So from the Microsoft 365 Admin Center, uh, we'll come down here to Compliance. As always, you may need to click Show All and then click Compliance to be able to see the Compliance Center. No big deal there. And Compliance Center is awesome. There's so much that you can do with inside the Compliance Center. All right, but we're actually just going to work with policies today and data loss prevention and policies. Now, before we get in here, these official DLP docs are actually really good, as are the videos. Now, this tenant has a few policies for testing. You can see they're pending deletion. They take some time. But we are going to create some policies. They've made it super simple over time. I'm going to click Create Policy. And the focus of these policies weird portal bug there the focus of these policies is really what can any company get in trouble for if they were sending out x type of data right and something happened it's it's that simple so what shouldn't we be emailing what do we constantly harp on our clients not to email uh to just anyone so we'll come to financial here to start and you can see they've templatized this by country plus they've got pci here i'm in the united states i'm going to build u.s financial data but of course you will want to build based on your own country. So we've got uh, just U.S. financial data all up. We've got PCI, we've got FTC consumer rules, and we've got GLBA. All right. So I'm a fan of GLBA because it covers a lot in one policy, and GLBA applies to absolutely everybody, right? Um, so let's go ahead and talk about it. We've got credit card numbers, bank account numbers, ITINs, which is just like a tax identifier issue to a person who doesn't have a social. And then we've got social security numbers. Pretty straightforward, right? Uh, none of that should probably be uh, emailed to just anyone. So we're going to start here and we'll hit next. So we've got USGLBA next. And it just names our policy in such a description for us, which is super nice. Here we're going to pick where does this policy apply? Now, if you're on Business Premium, you don't have any on-premises repos, and we're not going to worry about Pirate BI today. We're going to worry about Exchange, SharePoint, OneDrive, and Teams, all the core places we share and communicate, right? So there's some really cool stuff we can do you'll see in just a second. Now, by default, everyone's included. For these policies, I tend to include everyone. And you might need an excluded uh, list. So you can see you can do it by site or DG, what have you. Uh, some people may need to be sending this information, HR or... Um, other groups, you know, finance, and you may want to set custom rules for them, make sure they encrypt those kind of things. But for now, we're going to leave everyone in. And these are the things we're going to cover. Perfect. And we want to obviously detect when content is shared with people outside my organization. So we're preventing sort of accidental or maybe nefarious data exfil here, right? So we'll hit next. Um, so what we're saying here is how do we want to detect and apply rules against this? So here's a really cool thing. When content matches the policy conditions, show policy tips to users and send them an email notification. So if I customize this tip here, this is pretty awesome. Okay, because I can actually show what we call a policy tip right within Outlook, for example, that says, hey, we're not sure you should be doing this before I even send the email. So I'm a big fan of that. Um, I leave this on. If you want to, you can customize what the email says right so we can have some fun here and say hey friend why are you sending PII out please call IT 
whatever we wanted to say, right? Um, same thing with the policy tip. This appears in line as you're typing a message. So we're going to say this may violate policy, what have you. Whatever you wanted to say, probably put in a call IT at, you know, one, two, three. Um, and what we're going to do here is say when that's detected at all. So if I find one instance of a credit card number, we're going to flag this. All right. Now I want to point out that, you know, false positives are a thing. They do occur. We'll get to sort of the workaround for that in a moment. But keep in mind, too, these are not um, just your standard, you know, 16 numbers together as a credit card number, like some of those vulnerability mapping tools that are just looking for 16 consecutive numbers. They've got patterns from Visa and MasterCard and all the issuers and, and how socials work and all that jazz. It's all in there. So it's it's a little more specific than 16 digits or, or nine digits or what have you. It is important sort of to bear in mind that it's totally possible to have a false positive, though. It just happens. Nothing's perfect. Um, we've also got send incident reports and email here. So if there's a, a compliance person in the organization or you want them sent to your help desk here or whatever, you can add your, uh, your recipients here. And they'll receive an alert when something happens. And then you'll see I checked restrict access or encrypt the content Microsoft 365. So that's going to restrict who can access it, right? It's pretty straightforward. Um, so we've already kind of set this here. Uh, block users from receiving email or accessing shared one point, or excuse me, SharePoint, OneDrive, and Teams files. Um, so that's pretty straightforward, right? We're going to block people outside the organization for viewing this content. So if I'm sending an email, email doesn't go out. If I share a SharePoint link to a Word doc with a bunch of socials in it, even if I share it with them, they can't open it. It's going to unshare it, for lack of a better term. Um, and then this is the important part. We were talking about false positives, especially as a baby step. I do tend to allow overrides. Now, as I move beyond the baby steps phase, I'll tend to break out policies, and I'll have a social security number policy, for example, that doesn't allow overriding. You just you should never be sending a social security number in an email, right? Um, there are, unfortunately, today still scenarios where there's a business case to send out a credit card number. It is what it is. Uh, don't have to be a fan with, of it sometimes. You just got to live with it. But I do like to require business justification, which basically says, give me a sentence about why you're doing this before I let you do it, right? And that gets logged. Um, so we'll save all that here. And I am a big advocate for testing your policies just in case something goes wrong. Um, but I do show policy tips, kind of gives users a heads up that it's coming. And you can customize that policy tip back in a, the previous step to say, hey, here soon, you're not going to be able to do this. So give us a call. Let us know why you're doing this so we can know if we need to make exceptions. Okay. So we'll next through this guy. Everything looks good. That's it. We've created a DLP policy that adds some basic protections for our customer right? It doesn't take much. Like I said, it's a baby step. So while DLP is a more advanced topic, these basic policies are very simple. I'm going to go ahead and do one more and I'm going to do privacy. Um, you see, we've got GDPR and all the good stuff in here. We've also got US Patriot Act. Now I'm creating this policy because I want you to know that it's okay to override or excuse me, sort of be duplicative in this. Um, what I mean by that is I can have two policies that cover credit card number. Policies apply in order, okay? So I want to want you to keep that in mind. So we'll go next, next, and I'm going to kind of fly through this one. Oops, that other one's still pending delete. So we'll add restrict, and we'll add test for good measure. Doing this live, folks. All right, so we'll turn off these two. And then what we can do here is next here. If we don't want to be duplicative, we could take the same policy and remove out item types that we want. So let's say, you know what? We got credit card numbers covered. That's fine. We got bank account numbers covered. I want this policy to focus on items and socials. And like I was talking about before, no socials should be going out. Um, I'm going to restrict that access. And in the case of socials, I tend not to allow overrides, okay? I don't want you emailing me your social security number. And I don't want to be emailing your social security number to anyone, all right? So we'll fly through here. We'll turn this one on right away. And that's it. It's built. It's, it's super simple to roll these things out, okay? So we'll let this save. Um, last thing I'm going to show you about policy building is that if you remember, we turned this one on with just testing, 
So I'm going to come into this one and edit it. Let's say you've tested it. Everything looks good. Uh, you've, you've tweaked it if you needed to. So what we're going to do is edit this policy and fly through these first couple pages. And all we have to do is click turn it on right away. All right, and that will turn it from testing to on. It will begin enforcing very shortly. Now, it's important to note a DLP change can take about an hour uh, to take effect. And that's it. Our policy is updated. So the whole point of positioning DLP as a baby step was to position it in a way that it can be a baby step. Right? As you dig into specific compliances or specific needs of your customer, if you get really deep in the DLP, like protecting trade secrets, uh, it, it definitely is no longer a baby step. But those couple policies we just built are a very easy way to add a level of uh, risk reduction, right? Reduction to electronic communications. So I hope you found this informative. Uh, let me know if you're going to give it a shot at your clients. Links down below. And we'll see you on the next Modern Security Baby Step. Ooh.